Hello, welcome back to the channel. You find me and my friend and colleague James Disdale here at Blyton Park, where we don't have very much time, but we do have a brand spanking new BMW M3. And James, you have an Alfa Romeo Quadrifolio? Quadro Quadrifolio? So now, what with one thing and another, we can't be in the same car at the same time at the moment. So what's going to happen is I'm going to give you a walk around, technical overview of the M3. We'll gloss over the nose a little bit. Uh, then we will both drive the cars. I'll say what the BMW is like. James will say what the Alfa is like. And at the end, we will have a chat and decide which is the finest super saloon in the world. Okay, so to the new M3. Just don't look there. It's based as ever on a three series saloon. There is an M4 coupe as well, which is based on the four series coupe. This one is an M3 competition. Now in some markets, you can get a non-competition version, which is less powerful. But in the UK, we only get the M3 and M4 competition. That means that the twin turbocharged, three litre, straight six, two single scroll turbos, under there makes 510 metric horsepower, 503 brake, which is loads, and about 470, 480 foot pounds as well. That drives through an eight speed full automatic torque converter auto, not a dual clutch transmission, to the back wheels via an electronically controlled limited slip diff. But such is the power and the oomph and the torque of this car. And this car is a big car these days. It's 4.8 meters long, uh, one point, nearly 1.9 meters wide, and it weighs 1,730 kilos. It's almost M5 light, isn't it? It's almost the size of an M5 from like three generations ago, the one with the V10 engine. So from the summer, this car will get the option of four wheel drive because that is the car that the M3 is now becoming. As standard, it's on 18 inch front wheels and 19 inches at the rear, but this one's got an optional upgrade to 19s and 20s. It's got a few upgrades inside too, which add to its price, its base price of 75. So this will come out at well into the 80s. But let's go for a drive and see if it still retains that M3 character or if it is sort of more M5-ish in the way it goes down the road. Okay, so welcome to the inside of the new BMW M3 with these optional carbon fibre seats that get slightly strange carbon fibre thing, which make a lot of sense in a racing car, but it's weird in a road car. But otherwise, this is a fantastic driving environment. You don't have to have these seats, by the way. They're like a three grand option. This is a great driving environment. The, the seating position itself is terrific. I get a round steering wheel. There's decent space in the back and the boot. This is now a big car, as I've said. And the rest of the interior is trimmed very nicely, laid out really well. BMW has a touch screen, but you also get this controller for the iDrive system at the same time. So ergonomically, I think this is a terrifically set up car for driving. But the important stuff is stuff like the setup and M mode that allows one to change between road, sport and track, or in fact, full mode control yourself from engine, chassis, steering and brake, you can put into individual modes. So I'm gonna put that into manual. Steering is actually relatively light by the standards of a lot of sports cars. It's only got two options, comfort or sport. And even if you put it into sport, it's still not as heavy as something like an E63 AMG. I don't think it's any lighter necessarily than the Alpha, but it's not a heavy steering system. It's very precise. There is some road feel in there. At the moment, it's got ESC on, as you may be able to sort of see it grabbing. So let's turn that all the way off. So that's about three and a half, four thousand revs. The engine's got plenty of urge, no real lag to speak off at of these revs. It's well controlled. Chassis is at the moment in comfort. So there's a little bit of lean. Body isn't too loose. Let's put that into sport. Got my engine in sport as well. And the gearbox is in fast response mode. There's a lot going on in this car, but not as much as there is in, say, Mercedes AMG, I don't think. It's just got a really nice balance. Even though the steering's not that heavy, you do get sort of road feel through because these seats are figure hugging and the chassis is quite well tied down to move to Sport Plus for even firmer tying down. You get a feel through the seat of what the car is up to. Right, so let's extend the engine in a second. It's hard to get too much heat into these tires when it's slippery underfoot. It's a lot easier to get heat into the back tires because it's got 500 horsepower and 470 foot pounds. Also gets two options of brake pedal feel. I don't think it really needs two options of brake pedal feel. Just 
you know, one correct brake pedal feel would be plenty. To its credit, it does not feel like a 1730 kilogram car. And partly that's the fact that it's really fast. And I also think partly is the fact that steering is quite light and responsive in the same way that a Ferrari V12 doesn't feel its weight. This doesn't feel as heavy as it is because it responds so well to sort of modest effort steering inputs. Now, I think in these kind of conditions it feels almost as sort of agile and chuckable as something like an M2 would. And then there is the M3's party piece, M Drift Analyzer. Attention, use only on private roads and in an appropriate environment and conditions. DSC off is activated, okay. And then it tells me how I'm doing at drifting, ridiculously. But, you know, let's see, let's see. The trouble is I want to look at that and look at my drifts at the same time. Last drift, four stars, 5.8 seconds, 129 yards, with a maximum drift angle of 22 degrees. Four stars. I'll take that for my first effort. Obviously, on the road, you can't use it. You go on a normal track day and they don't like it if you do drifts either. But I guess if you live somewhere where you have access to a frozen lake, or you have sort of private track days, or an airfield day or something like that. Well, or even probably a BMW driving experience, which I guess they will lay on for some owners. Surely it's gonna like a drift where you take fourth gear halfway through it. Four stars, 6.1 seconds, 150 yards, 16.6. So the short of it is, this car is good fun. It's a giggle. It's hardcore. It does feel like an M car. It does feel quite angry. I have driven it on the road and I think it suits this four-door style more than it suits being a coupe. It suits being a super saloon. doesn't feel like the Alpha, which I love the Alpha. The Alpha to me feels like a sports car, not a sports saloon. This feels like a sports saloon. It feels like an M car beating a super saloon. And I was impressed on the road but get it on a track in the right conditions. And it is absolutely terrific. I think it's a really, really good thing. James is probably having similar amounts of fun in the Alpha. My suspicion is, having driven them both back to back-ish, this is a better track car, that's a better road car. And let's face it, they are road cars. But I have rather enjoyed this, I have to say. So, the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. Now, the Alfred's been around for a while now, three, three or so years. Um, it's had a facelift, but not an actual facelift because, as you'll see of the exterior shots, just look at it. It's gorgeous. I mean, compared to the BMW, this thing is beautiful. And if you walk into a showroom and you look at the Alpha, and you look at the BMW, and you walk out with the BMW, hmm, well, that's just showroom appeal. What about the rest of the car? Well, if we're talking practicalities, if we're talking the dull stuff, get in the Alpha and it feels its age. Just the plastics, lots of hard plastics down here. Infotainment system's been upgraded, so we've now got Apple CarPlay and the like, but it's nowhere near as intuitive or as comprehensive as the BMW system. Yes, it feels a bit more old-fashioned, but driving position's very good. Got this lovely three-spoke steering wheel that's just got the right rim thickness, bits of Alcantara in here. Mm. Now, we've driven both these cars on the road, we're on track now. Alpha is a lovely road car, so we're in normal at the moment, adaptive dampers in their softest settings, and it does ride really well. It breathes with the surface in the way that BMW doesn't. The BMW's a bit more brittle, a bit more harder edged. However, get onto the track, and we're gonna put it now in dynamic, and then race and the Alpha is transformed. Now, it's been said many times before, but it was worth repeating. The man behind the chassis on the Alfa Romeo is the same man that developed the Ferrari 458, and you can feel his work. The steering is ultra, ultra quick. Quicker even than the BMWs. It's really nervous at first. You have to calm your inputs. 
to stop yourself oversteering into every corner. It makes it feel really lithe and agile. Now, Alfa Romeo claim it weighs about 1,580 kilos. Now, we had this on a scale, but pre-facelift, and it came in at about 1,700 kilos. So that's quite a bit more, but it's still lighter than the BMW. And it feels it as well, but only just. Both of them are light on their feet, but the Alpha just feels that bit lighter. Now, its engine is claimed to be distantly related to Ferrari's 3.9 V8. They kind of shrug their shoulders and look confused when you ask them about it, but it is. It's a 2.9 litre V6 twin turbo, 503 brake horsepower, 443 pounds for the torque, and frankly, it's enough. Like the BMW, it's got that appetite for revs. Neither of them actually rev much above 6,500 RPM, but once they get above 5,000, they take off and this thing just flies. And it's quite mild mannered in normal mode on the road. It is the least vociferous of the pair. You just don't hear it. It feels like a normal, sounds like a normal alpha, you fighter. But put it in dynamic mode, you open up the pipes and listen to it. Lovely rasp on the upshifts and on the downshifts. And it properly rows along when you get on it. <laughs> It's a quick car, this. Now, the chassis, in dynamic, everything is firmed up. It's not quite as composed as the BMW. The BMW's just got that bit more body control. You can just feel this starting to hop around a bit. It's maybe a bit too stiff. And it's on Pirelli P courses, which in these damn conditions, as you can see, are, well, slightly scatty. It has to be said, in the dry, lots of grip. In the damp, greasy conditions, not so much. Brakes are good. These are the non-carbon ceramics. On the road, they are frustratingly grabby. If you like to do a limo stop up to the lights, this thing will make you want to punch yourself in the face because it just will not let you do it. But once you get some heat into them and you start leaning on them, they are mighty effective and you've just got the right amount of feel and progression. 8-speed auto, like the BMW, but it's got these lovely long paddles. BMW have gone all carbon fibre on their latest paddles, but this, these are much nicer. Look at them. They look like they're straight out of, I don't know, a Ferrari. This thing, the balance, as I say, the steering is really quick. And frankly, it doesn't quite have the BMW's feel. The BMW lets you know what's going on, allows you to load up the nose slightly more progressively. This is much more sudden. As I say, you need to measure your inputs, but it gives the car great agility. And you can just play with the balance. As I say, the tyres in these conditions aren't good. We've got turn-in oversteer, mid-corner oversteer. Probably got some, yeah, exit all the way through oversteer. Yikes! It's not ultimately as, as accomplished as the BMW, but my God, it makes you smile. They talk about Latin Brio, character. Yes, they're cliches, but they're cliches for a reason. I just love this thing. So, it's your money. They're 75,000 pounds. I'm sending you to a dealer one right now to go and buy one and drive for the next three years. What are you going to get? Right, I'm going to take your money. I'm going to hesitate for a bit. Okay. And then I'm going to walk into an Alfa Romeo dealership. The shock verdict, as am I actually as well. I agree, the, the, the BMW edges it on track, but the Alfa overall for me is a nicer thing. Now, the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quattrofolio is the greatest super saloon in the world, according to us. But my colleague, Matt Saunders is over there. He's writing up this story, which also includes an E63 AMG for Autocar Magazine. And it'll be on autocar.co.uk shortly after that. Will he agree? Who knows? But anyway, you can find out soon on there. Join us again, because we've got an M4 video coming soon, and we've got other stuff, reviews, news, yada, yada, yada. So we'd love an up thumb and a subscribe, and we'll see you next time.